Good day dear students. In the previous class, we were talking about mainly two poets. One is Gerard Manley Hopkins and the other T.S. Eliot, Thomas Tons Eliot and his epoch making poem, uh, The Wasteland and another short poem, The Journey of the Magi and the worst drama, The Murder in the Cathedral and he was also given the title the literary dictator of the 20th century and it is about the war and the aridity of the war uh, uh, especially the loss of faith that he is speaking in his poem the w wasteland so we'll continue with the interwar years that is the uh, time between the first world war and the second world war you will find that the as i told you earlier T.S. Eliot was born in USA and he came over to England. In England, there was yet another uh, young poet, Winston Hugh Auden, W.H. Auden, as he is familiarly called, and he was uh, one of the best poets of the time, uh, very young, and he could write, he could transform anything and everything into poetry, and there was uh, an appreciating audience all around him, and he was one of the uh, prominent, uh, prominent and uh, talented poets of England at that time. And he felt that England was too restricting. So he shifted from England to America and settled there for a long, long time. And it's only towards the end of his life that he moved from America to Austria later, much, much later after the war. So here, you find two poets, one from USA came over to England to be a naturalized citizen of England and one an English born uh, citizen from England going over to America and settling there because he appreciated the freedom that is there in America. So you find these two poets and uh, keep them in mind because it is very important. So let's speak about Winston Hugh Morden and his group of poets. His group of poets means um, poets who were regarded him as the leader and there were a lot of others like uh, Stephen Spender and um, again you find um, some small minor poets and I'll mention only one uh, that is Stephen Spender now because you find that uh, W.H. Auden was uh, uh, a really a uh, talented poet, very young and uh, he was really talented and if you give him anything, you will, he will create a poem. And you will also find a um, poem about uh, the night mail. The night mail means uh, England uh, established uh, the mail service to Scotland, the hilly area. And to inaugurate that, he was asked to write a poem. And he wrote that. And uh, we used to have it in our younger days in the school. And uh, it is really uh, something about the way people awaited the sound of the train coming up. And uh, the, it will bring mail to them. And uh, that was just uh, something to be uh, something uh, waited anxiously uh, or eagerly by the people of the hilly area. So he could write about that. So if somebody asked him to write a poem, he could really just uh, sit and if you have a, give him a paper and pen, he will write a poem. That kind of talent he had. And he was uh, a person who wrote drama, was drama or so later. But you will find that he had written a lot of poems, lots and lots of poems, and each one better than the other. You will find uh, that he was able to uh, uh, to go over to America and during the war time he uh, drove the ambulance and served the army in the capacity of an ambulance driver. He was for a moment fascinated by fascism and he went over to, England, uh, uh, to Italy, France and all these other countries and uh, he came to know of these people and also about the political situation. He had a little bit of the uh, leanings towards uh, uh, the left or the communism, but his uh, type of communism was not totally right. So uh, the historians would like to call the group as the pink generation, means a watered version 
or the lightened version of communism because that was the time when uh, people were uh, or young people were so very enthusiastic and they really want to be revolutionary they want to be part of the, in the army or to be there in the uh, war zone but somehow or other they couldn't and the, those who couldn't uh, be there in the war zone they naturally had to uh, be there in one way or the other and uh, Gordon did this through the poems that he wrote. So here you find that he became a great inspiration for a lot of young poets and they flocked around him and so he was able to find uh, that uh, he could write about anything and everything and uh, anything and everything became a theme for his poems. So this is why you find some beautiful poems written by uh, W.H. Auden. The poem that comes to my mind is The Unknown Citizen. And it is about, uh, in the modern times, I can understand uh, this poem after so many years. Because in India, the system and everything was totally different. But in America, it started quite early. And so, uh, Auden was able to write about uh, the unknown citizen. A citizen who died and uh, nobody knows his name but he is a number because the subtitle of the poem is a number and with a lot of uh, initials also because that is the way he is in the social records and uh, here the social records will give you all the information about your own self like for uh, like for example the other card that we have now to a certain extent it gives you personal information and uh, as a poet, Auden exaggerates it and says he was working and he earned wages. He rarely took a uh, leave and uh, he had uh, four point the accepted number of children uh, or the restricted number of children. Whether he is happy or not, nobody knows. That is the way it is. The mechanized world was moving and uh, they are not bothered about the person as such. He becomes a number in uh, the statistics of the uh, uh, department of the country and he becomes just another data. So, in the modern world, in, uh, you will understand this now because we have other card, we have um, uh, uh, so many cards now coming up and you are just a number finally there is your name of course there and the time will come when you will be allotted certain numbers and uh, your name will be forgotten by people uh, that this is what the poet says and it gives a beautiful picture of the uh, uh, the developing america of that time and this is indeed very true so modern lived for a long time and from the interwar years to the modern age to postmodernism, he lived. And he, his poetry was still appreciated because he had that kind of capacity to write even from a very young age. And so from the university, he came over to the, uh, to the society and there also he really wanted to establish, uh, not just establish, he really wanted to be with them. And with that sense, he was able to write poems. And when he went over to Austria, he was able to listen to the church bells of the country and he was able to write poems like Hore Canonike, means Canonike Lovers and um, a lot of uh, beautiful poems and one better than the other. And you will have to read through his poems and understand it properly to understand the uh, real order. As I told you, anything and everything became a theme for his poetic craft. And that kind of, uh, he need not spend too much time on writing poetry. It comes to him naturally and it becomes excellent. Very few people will be uh, gifted with that kind of uh, talent. And so you find in Auden a model for others to follow, a spirit for others to imitate and an eagerness to get involved in the social uh, cust uh, the in society and the problems of the world. So no wonder people regarded him as the leader and the pink generation really followed Auden to a great extent. Stephen Spender was no different and as his friend and uh, uh, the fellow poet, Spender was able to write poems which were very short but at the same time very uh, good 
and uh, you, we used to have collections like uh, Odd and Splendor and uh, the others coming one after the other. So they all wrote about the war because their war experience was something that they just cannot ignore. And uh, you will also find that um, uh, the war had destroyed certain things like factories and uh, the, a lot of things. And even uh, after the war also there was economic depression that also affected the country. Auden made it a theme for his poems. And so you find this um, uh, the uh, deserted village like uh, situation uh, where you find that uh, the whole area which was once upon a time the center of a factory and there was a township around it and when the factory was no longer working the township just uh, got uh, abandoned and uh, the, it was just like a uh, arid wasteland. And about that also W.H. Auden writes. So here, as I told you, uh, Auden as a human being can be found when he uh, entrusted or when he uh, went over to the war office and offered to be the ambulance driver because that was the only job that they could give him since he was more academician rather than uh, trained something. So he became an ambulance driver and he was able to commute, take people from the war front to the hospital and that really touched him. And he was able to write poems based on that also because war is quite ugly for us. And to portray war in the right sense is the uh, duty of a poet. Both Spender and uh, W.H. Auden uh, wrote about war and it was uh, in a way these were this was uh, in a way some of the best war poems and it is still appreciated by the world so here from in the end of war years and almost uh, in the 20th century uh, fiction was really booming and at the same time people were or even um, artists or even creative writers were experimenting with the new form of writing they are no longer satisfied with the old form of writing poems they started experimenting with the different types of verses and that to suit the theme that they have in mind. So in a way, the theme of the poem and the, uh, the type of poetry that they wrote or they constructed were something that went along and it makes good reading. So you think that the old form of writing is now gone and the new form of writing had been uh, uh, brought in by T.S. Eliot and W.H. Auden and the others. So this is uh, also a time that is in the war years was also a time people started experimenting with the different forms or style of writing and these forms or styles of writing was much appreciated by the uh, readers because it was a time of war as I told you and, they, and the people just do not have much time for reading fiction. Even though towards the end of the 19th century, there was a great boom in novel writing or fiction writing and heavy fiction or long drawn out fiction was uh, written and it was appreciated by the people. But because of the war, when soldiers started moving from one uh, side to the other, they don't get time to read or anything and whenever they got time, they could read only very short, uh, shortly written um, prose or even novel. So this is also a time when you find the development of short story. So where if uh, there is indeed the novels that were written, the much appreciated novels of the time were written by James Joyce. I think you have come across, you will come across James Joyce in the next semester uh, or even after that, that is in the fourth semester. He wrote about, he wrote uh, his, uh, his novels in a peculiar style and that is the stream of consciousness method that is storytelling through the memories of one character or more than one character. So the, it is the memories that create the story and that was okay for the war torn Europe and also for the world because they don't have much reality to think of where everything have, will have a happy ending. They don't believe that. Even there will be an ending for them whether their body will be taken to the home or nothing is uh, uh, uncertain. 
nothing is uh, uh, there to make it certain for them so the total uncertainty of life was people uh, was uh, that which people believed in and people understood and the uh, writings or literature which portrayed that through the changes in style really was appreciated by the people during these war years during the end of war years and during the war years and even after the war time also uh, the post war uh, time or the post modern uh, times and uh, postmodern literature is yet another genre, uh, another uh, era which you will have to learn. But you will find that it is in a way uh, much. Uh, uh, this uh, time gave much to the liter development of literature. So the people or the poets who wrote the poems during the even during the war time were. Uh, poets who were really touched by the scenes that they witnessed, the people who worked in the war field, people who would just not sit and listen to the radio, to the war news or read about it in the newspaper, but people who had been in the battlefield and so they could write first hand uh, information uh, and they get that and they uh, write it or recreate it in their poetry. So. For the people to appreciate it, maybe at that time people may not have appreciated it much because they didn't have time to appreciate literature. But afterwards, you will find that it was much appreciated. So during the interwar years, poetry had a great boom, boom in the sense because it was short. People can read and people can understand, and it won't take much time. But it will remain with their with them for a long, long time, and it is not promising them any happy ending or the glory of war or anything it is just the condition of the people as such and they agree with that this is the best part about it the people uh, who are in the field they just agree with the uh, portrayal of the scenes that is there in the uh, poetry uh, by this uh, 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 by the poets so the poetry part was to give a uh, feeling of the war to the common people and both Auden and Spender did that through their writings especially their poems regarding the war poems and even after war also Auden wrote a lot and uh, as I told you he is one who can write on anything and everything anything is given to him anything give, give, you give him anything and he'll write a poem about it and uh, he is that kind of a creative writer so naturally people really uh, appreciated him and so uh, it's not just appreciation that uh, made him write poems it is that inner compulsion that made him put into words all that the feelings that the war created in his mind and so he moved on to the left wing or to the red or to the pink generation it is by his own violation and he moved from England to America where he felt that America will have more time or it will have more freedom uh, than England because in England was conservative to a great great extent and uh, America on the other hand was not so um, conservative and so naturally he felt that America is more open and he will have more opportunities to mingle with people and uh, have more uh, freedom to write and it is he really wanted to write about so uh, certain things which were so restrained by the english community and so maybe this is the reason why he shifted over to america so you have in Auden's life two phases let me say it is not two phases maybe two and a half or three phases one is the english phase while he was in england and wrote within that english community with all its restrictions but at the same time enjoyable poems and the second is the American phase means the time when he went over to America and enjoyed the indulgence of the country and the freedom and the free, whatever the freedom gave it to him he could write about it and uh, he really enjoyed his friends he started writing verse drama uh, with the Christopher Sherwood uh, uh, so many things he experimented with uh, during that time that is the second phase that is the American phase and there also you have a lot of points then towards the end of his life when he was very very old he shifted to Europe 
that is especially to Austria, where you can, uh, where Auden could uh, really listen to the sound of the uh, church bells, even though he was, uh, he had abandoned church for a long, long back, because uh, he felt that church just do not hold, church in the sense of religion just do not hold anything for him. But when he came over to Europe, to Austria, he could really recognize that spirit in him and that spirituality in him to recognize the fact that there is indeed something above all these things. And after war, there was a life and he was greatly thankful to God for that. So in Austria, he wrote poems, especially the poem called Hore Canonike, means canonical hours. The canonical hours are indeed the hours that are destined for the nuns and the priests to, uh, to recite their prayers. There is a certain rest, there, there is a certain time which is fixed and at that time they have to read through their canonical prayers and spend time like that, morning, evening and uh, uh, so on. And nowadays you find it only in the uh, morning and evening or even night prayers. But in Europe, when the time of winter and uh, summer were different, they used to have totally different timings. Early in the morning, 3 o'clock, then 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, then uh, mm -hmm. afternoon, uh, mid-morning, uh, mid mid-noon, and evening, and so many others. And all these time, the priests and the nuns, they read or they recited their prayers. That was how these monks lived in the monastery. So those times were taken and he is writing about people, ordinary people, and what they are doing during that time. They have no restriction or they uh, do not uh, have any concern about the canonical hours because they have to lead a life. And so he had uh, just uh, 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 divided it into sections, into this uh, uh, canonical hours uh, time and is writing about the life that is going on outside these monasteries. So in a way he is paying tribute to the uh, uh, group of people who live in the monastery and pray for the whole world and the people who lead a life outside. And uh, in a way he is putting it uh, side by side. And we appreciate the way he had done it. So here you find Auden with the three faces, not two, but three faces in his literary career, especially his poetic career, and taking the world uh, at large and uh, making it possible to move from uh, one place to the other and to extend his horizon and uh, introduce through his poems the various aspects of each country. So when you study Auden's poems, you get to know a lot about England. You get to know that uh, England started uh, mail uh, to the Scottish highlands quite late. And there is the night mail there. And uh, that is uh, in a way to say that uh, the changes that are taking place in England. And in America also, whatever that is happening in America, the unknown citizen all tells us about America. And when you uh, find Auden moving over to Europe, to Austria, you find about the way the uh, canonical hours and also the life in Europe, which is much more sedate, not hectic as it is in America, but without, without the restraint of England. So he is not blaming any country. He is just experiencing the changes of each country and accepting it and finding solace or finding comfort in his olden uh, in his uh, um, uh, old age, uh, the comfort and the calm of the uh, Euro uh, of the European countries. So you find that calm scene reflected in his poems also. So we find one uh, great poet in W. H. Auden, a poet who had written more poems than any other poet. Let me say, and. Uh, yeah, well, he is one poet whom you will find uh, to, much to appreciate. So he had written much shorter poems. He had written longer poems also. And uh, all his poems are good. And it's not like uh, he had written one great poem and another uh, lesser poem. Nothing like that. Everything comes his way. He writes about it. That's his style. 
so you find him quite easy to understand and uh, you can really understand why he wrote such poems in such a manner and things like that so he remained a poet from the very young days to the very end of his day and he moved from england to america and from america to europe towards the last stage of his life and there are a lot of poets following him not just the uh, people who follow him but a lot of poets following him which shows that he was indeed a leader of the group of young poets at that time and of this generation especially the pink generation okay thank you we'll continue uh, more uh, about the other poets and especially about um, english poetry from the other countries in the next class because english language is restricted not just to england but to all the other countries and so many other countries because of colonization so we have to know what is happening in other countries and whatever is being portrayed through those poems you have a lot to learn or poets uh, who present represent them from the different countries and so we'll have a class on them in the next class okay till then read any poem that comes across uh, you from uh, by orden and stephen spender and uh, you will find a lot of other poets coming in between but i think these poets are the best and you have yet another poet that is dylan thomas and i'll speak about dylan thomas in the next class because um, he belongs to a totally different class even though he belongs to the 20th century okay we'll talk about it in the next class thank you